Did you know that you were 96% more creative when you were a kid than you are now? That's not just a made up stat, though it could be a really good made up stat. NASA, NASA actually did a study with 1,600 four and five year olds. And what they found with the 1,600 four and five year olds is 98% of them, when tested, tested at the creative genius level. Now, only five years later at 10 years old, that dropped from 98% down to 30%. They tested them again five years later and it dropped from 30% down to 12%. And later as adults, they found that you're only about 2% chance likelihood of actually testing at the creative genius level. That means somewhere along the line, we lose 96% of our creative genius capability that we were born with at, as kids. How does this even happen? How could that happen, that you lose all of that drive, you lose all of that dream, you lose all of that action-taking capability? Well, the reality is when you're first born, you're really only born with two innate fears. The two innate fears that we're born with, evolutionarily programmed with, number one, the fear of loud noises, number two, the fear of heights, okay? Now, if you're uh, an ancient human, this makes sense, right? Because if you're, if you're a, a baby and you hear a loud noise, a saber-toothed tiger or something like that, you don't want to go crawling towards the saber-toothed tiger. And if you're about to crawl off of a cliff, probably not going to be helpful. So loud noises, heights, two things that we should probably stay away from. That makes sense evolutionarily. But what this means is all other fears have been socially programmed into us. Now, our socially programmed fears are designed to keep us safe as well, right? As, as evolutionary man, we thrived in communities. That's how we evolved to work in packs, work in communities. Now, if you were uh, socially outcast or socially shamed, you would get outcast from this community and you might be eaten by that saber-toothed tiger. So all of the social programmings of what's okay to do and what's not okay to do was designed to help keep us safe as well. But the reality is in today's society, it's actually causing us to slowly wither away and die. It's causing us to prevent ourselves from going for what we want. It's preventing us from thinking better and it's preventing us from taking action for fear of judgment, fear of criticism, and fear of failure. Think about it, when you were two years old, you didn't give a shit. You ran full speed ahead, you tripped, you fell, you scraped your knee, you cried your eyes out, you got up, you brushed it off, you laughed your ass off, and you went and did it again. What happened? Where did we lose that, that thinking big? When you were wearing your astronaut outfit, or you wanted to fly to space, you wanted to become a professional baseball player, you wanted to become a zoologist, whatever it was. Somewhere along the lines, we lost the creative genius and we lost the desire to act. So I wanna give you three tips today to take back that creative genius, to get back into action, and start dreaming big like you did when you were a kid. So step number one, I want everybody to realize that the biggest enemy, the biggest competition to thinking big and success is not failure itself, it's the fear of failure. Fear of failure kills more dreams than failure itself ever will. But the reality is we don't even fear failure. We fear people seeing us fail. We fear people judging us. We fear people criticizing us. We fear people thinking that we are different. This goes back to what we were talking about when we were brought up in communities as evolutionary man, social shaming meant being outcast from society and that meant dying. Now, Dr. David R. Hawkins actually did a study on this and what he found was shame. The energetic state of shame is the lowest energetic state that any human can feel just above death. This is the fact that we can actually fear shame more than we fear death itself. Now, I lost one of my best friends to suicide, and because of that, I've done a lot of digging into what could cause somebody to take their own life, and the number one emotion that will cause someone to take their own life is shame. People can actually fear shame, social shaming, more than they fear death itself, and this is evolutionarily programmed into our brain. So the reality is, giving a shit about what other people think, giving a shit about people judging you, criticizing you, that's actually the biggest fear that we have and it prevents us from dreaming big, going for what we really want and taking action because you might look foolish going after it. So if you understand that that's where that fear is coming from, if you understand that that's gonna be your biggest block holding you back, we can start to let it go. Because the sooner you stop giving a shit about what other people think, the sooner you're gonna be fulfilled, 
you're gonna have more money, more meaning, more impact. You're gonna become self-actualized and you actually have a life worth living. So we gotta, we gotta give up that shame. We gotta give up that fear of criticism, judgment, and self-doubt. Now the second thing that we can do to help us start to dream bigger and actually get into action is something that I refer to as mental rehearsal. Right now, there's a difference between mental rehearsal and worrying your ass off, okay? The reality is our subconscious mind, which is 95% of our brain, that subconscious mind craves familiarity. Again, this is evolution. Our subconscious, that 95% of our brain that is programmed by society, by, by everybody around us, is designed to keep us safe. It's closely tied to that limbic system, the evolutionary part of our brain, the crocodilian part of our brain that wants to keep us alive. But the reality is we don't really need to worry about survival anymore. We need to worry about actually living. Now the truth is that 95% of our brain is being programmed by our past, right? Everybody knows this. Our past programs our subconscious mind. The evolution of, of what we've been through, the traumas that we've been through, the decisions we've made, the outcomes that we've gotten, now create the beliefs we have, the thoughts we think, the habits we have, which then create our future. So if we're not careful, our past will become our future. Now I don't know about you, but do you want your past to become your future? I don't. So what we need to do, if the brain craves familiarity, if the brain craves safety, how do you make the unknown safe? Because the reality is, the unknown is where possibility and success and purpose and all of those things that we really want in life actually live. If you want more money, if you want a better relationship, if you want more fulfillment, that lives in the unknown, that lives in a state that you've never been to before. So if, if our subconscious craves familiarity and it'll keep pulling us back to the past, how do we make the subconscious aware of this new thing? Well, that's what we call mental rehearsal. This could be affirmations, visualizations. It could be, I was having a good conversation with one of my buddies. He said, Xander, I don't do visualizations. And he's made multiple millions of dollars. And I said, but you daydream, don't you? And he goes, oh yeah, I daydream a lot. So are you rehearsing your success? Are you envisioning where you're gonna be? Are you envisioning how you're gonna get there? He goes, absolutely. That's visualization. You're making the subconscious familiar with the future that you want to have. Now this is different than worrying. Worriers get these negative thoughts, these negative stories in their mind, and they review the failures that they're gonna have over and over, and they program these failures into their subconscious mind, which makes it familiar to their subconscious mind, and we wonder why they fail. So we need to do mental rehearsals of the success that we're gonna have, how big you want your business, what kind of clients you wanna have, how much success they're gonna have, how much money you're gonna be making, how you're gonna feel in your relationships, how you're gonna feel in your, in your career, in your alignment, the freedom you're gonna feel, the love you're gonna feel, the joy you're gonna feel, the alignment you're gonna feel. You need to rehearse this in your mind so that your subconscious starts to realize that that's a familiar life. Because the reality is your brain cannot tell the difference between reality and a vividly re imagined reality. So we need to mentally rehearse where we want to go and program that 95% of our brain to realize, okay, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I won't fight it, let's do it. Now the last step, once we understand what our biggest roadblocks are gonna be, the fears and the, the subconscious doubts that are gonna hold us back, and then number two, once we start to mentally rehearse our successes, to program that cognitive dissonance in our brain to pull us forward, the last step is to actually get moving. The truth is, there's no such thing as success without action. So we have to get into action. Now just like a mo locomotive, just like a huge train, I want you to think of a big freight train with 50 cars, tens of thousands of pounds, tons and tons and tons of payload that it's carrying. Now to get that thing moving, it's difficult. That engine has to put all its might, all its power into choo, 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 choo. And maybe in the beginning the wheels are slipping and they're turning and the, and the engine's not actually moving anywhere. The most work that this train is going to do is in the very beginning. To break the inertia of emotion, of immobility, and to get moving, and it choo 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 and eventually it starts moving inch by inch, then foot by foot, one mile an hour, two miles an hour, four miles an hour, five miles an hour, and if it stops, if it stops the momentum, it's gonna kill, it's gonna stop. So it just keeps fighting, chug, 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 10 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80. Now by the time that thing's really going, 
you could pull your you could pull your foot off the gas and it's just flying. You could put a brick wall in front of that thing and it's not going to stop it. That's the beauty of momentum. But the hardest part is in the very beginning, the first step. The first step is always the most difficult. I get this question all the time from our clients, Xander, how do you get the inspiration? How do you get the motivation to take action? And I tell them, you're thinking of it backwards. Motivation and inspiration doesn't come before action. Action breeds inspiration and motivation. Have you ever noticed that when you go do something that scares you, how do you feel afterwards? Do you feel down and tired? Or do you feel lit up? Do you feel energized? Of course you feel energized. After you go do something, you get this hit of norepinephrine and dopamine. It's this perfect combination of those two hormones in your brain, which creates the liquid equivalent of motivation. When you're talking about motivation, that's all it is. It's two hormones combining in your brain to help you feel inspired and motivated. Well, do you know how you trigger that? Taking one action that scares you. Most people don't know this about me, but I'm actually an introvert. Filming videos, not my favorite thing to do. So what do I do when I'm feeling down, when I'm feeling immobilized, when I'm feeling tired and I don't feel like doing anything? I grab my phone and I film a video. Doesn't matter if I'm gonna post it or not, doesn't matter. The act of filming a video, the act of doing something that scares me produces that norepinephrine and dopamine hit in my brain and all of a sudden, I'm lit up again. And now I can go do whatever it is that I need to do. I need you to realize that, that motivation and inspiration does not come before action. Whenever you're feeling tired, whenever you're feeling down, do something, anything, get moving. It might be 10 push-ups. It might be taking a cold shower. I have a cold plunge outside, so I jump in the cold plunge all the time because that'll definitely get you going. The reality is if you want to get motivation to act, you have to act first. In the end, we've all got bigger dreams than we really want to allow ourselves to believe. But once we start to accept that our big dreams can be achieved and we start to get into motion, Maybe we don't achieve all of our biggest dreams, but I can promise you one thing. Just by allowing yourself to dream and taking action toward that dream, you're gonna be a lot more fulfilled, a lot happier, and feel a lot more successful than if you just sit around and pretend like you never had any dreams at all. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, go ahead and hit the like button below and comment below any specific topics or subjects that you want me to cover in any future videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button below, and I'll see you in there.